Welcome to part three and our lesson on infrastructure middleware, which focuses on the core and native libraries that are part of the Android runtime layer. After completing this part of the lesson, you'll recognize key core Java libraries that are part of the Android platform. You recognize key Android libraries that are part of the Android platform. And you'll also recognize key native libraries that are part of the Android platform. Apps use core Java and Android libraries extensively whereas they don't use the native libraries as much, at least not directly. We'll first present an overview of the core Java libraries that are part of the Android runtime layer. Android contains many, but not all, of the core Java libraries in the Java and Java X packages. These include various packages such as Java Lang, Java Util, Java IO, Java Concurrency, and so on. This link at the bottom of the slide describes the differences between the Java and Android APIs, which have been converging slowly over time. One of the key classes provided as part of the core Java libraries in Android is the Java thread class. A Java thread is a unit of computation that runs in the context of a process. Java threads running in a process can communicate with each other via shared objects or message passing. Each Java thread leverages some unique state from the underlying Linux kernel thread that's used to execute it. This unique state includes things like a runtime stack to keep track of method and function calls, a program counter, and other registers. Moreover, Java's dynamically allocated or statically allocated objects can be shared across Java threads within a process. In other words, this state is common. There's also a number of Java synchronizers, which are used to coordinate actions between threads within a process with respect to mutual exclusion and various types of other synchronization and scheduling operations. Examples of these Java synchronizers include reentrant locks, stamp locks, semaphores, condition objects, phasers, and so on. These various synchronizers are defined in the Java Util Concurrent package, as well as the Java Util Concurrent locks and Java Util Concurrent Atomics package. Java synchronizers are typically used to prevent race conditions, which can occur when two or more threads attempt to access a shared object or a shared resource that is not properly protected by a lock. When this happens, corruption can occur, which causes all kinds of strange behaviors. Another set of packages contained in the core Java libraries are the Java networking classes. These Java network programming mechanisms can be used to exchange data between Android devices and remote servers. And they typically include various classes like socket and various factories for creating sockets. There's also a set of core Java libraries that relate to Java IO and files. For example, the Java file mechanisms can be used to store data persistently on Android devices as long as you follow the permissions model properly. Let's now talk about some of the central core Android libraries that are part of the Android runtime layer. Android contains thousands of classes in the Android packages. One of the key sets of packages and classes we'll talk about relate to concurrency, which occur in the OS package in the system portion of Android. There are two key mechanisms and frameworks that are provided in the concurrency packages in Android. One is called the Hammer framework, where Hammer stands for handlers, messages, and runnables. This framework allows operations to run in one or more threads and publish the results to the user interface thread. We'll be talking a lot about the, the Hammer framework throughout this course. There's another framework called the async task framework. The async task framework is similar to the Hammer framework, but it allows concurrent operations to take place without requiring application developers to use threads, handlers, messages, or runnables directly. So in a sense, it's more object-oriented and is able to encapsulate and hide many of the low-level details of concurrent programming. There's also a number of various app components that are defined in several packages with Android, the app package and content package in particular. These app components provide the building blocks for mobile apps that provide hooks that Android uses to control an app's lifecycle. These app components include activities, services, broadcast receivers, and content providers. We'll be focusing primarily on services and content providers in this course. The earlier course 
covered activities and broadcast receivers. Intents are used as the glue to coordinate the interactions between activities, services, and broadcast receivers. We talked about those in the previous course as well. Another interesting set of classes that are provided by Android as part of the core Android libraries are the Binder Interprocess Communication Framework. The Binder Framework enables synchronous and asynchronous communication to occur between various components within a mobile device. In particular, the Binder Framework is typically used to be able to communicate across processes that are running within one mobile device. In contrast, the networking mechanisms we talked about before that are part of the Java Net package are typically used to communicate from the device to a remote server. The source code for all the core Java and Android libraries is available online. You can see it at this link below. I strongly recommend you download this code and take a look at it because it'll give you all kinds of insights about how Android is implemented under the hood. We'll next present an overview of Android's native C and C++ libraries. Although Android apps are written using the Java APIs we just discussed, implementations of these APIs are often written in C and C++. The goal, of course, is to enhance overall system performance without sacrificing application developer productivity. Java and C and C++ can be combined by the Java Native Interface. The Java Native Interface, or JNI, defines a standard way for managed Java code to interact with native code that's written in C and C++. Android's Native Development Kit, or NDK, goes further and allows the implementation of apps and services using native C and C++ code. Using the NDK on portions of code can help to enhance performance by minimizing latency, maximizing throughput, and conserving key system resources, particularly battery and memory. However, resist the urge to develop all of your apps using the NDK because you'll lose many of the productivity benefits of using Java. Android's NDK can also be used to integrate existing C and C++ libraries into Android apps, thereby enhancing reuse. Let's take a look at some examples of native C and C++ libraries that are bundled with the Android platform. The, these native libraries are available in open source form and are often encapsulated via Java wrapper facades using the various core libraries in Android and Java we talked about earlier. The System C library is used to enable developers to write native system services for Android. This is something called Bionic libc, which is different from the standard GNU libc, again having to do with issues related to the GPL license. The Surface Manager is a set of libraries for compositing 2D and 3D graphic layers for multiple apps and displaying them on the user's screen. The Media Framework, which is provided by a project called Stage Fright, supports audio video streaming in the background. FreeType is a library for rendering bitmap and vector fonts. WebKit is a framework that's widely used on both mobile and non-mobile platforms for web browsing. OpenGL is a framework that supports 2D and 3D vector graphics and is often used for gaming apps on Android. SQLite is a relational database engine that performs so-called CRUD or create, read, update, and delete operations on persistent data that lives across power failures and turning off the device. And finally, the Secure Socket Layer, or SSL, is used to ensure confidentiality and integrity for web interactions, which is commonly used for various e-commerce interactions with web services running in the cloud. These native C and C++ libraries typically use non-Java concurrency libraries under the hood, such as POSIX pthreads. This is the end of part three of our lesson on infrastructure middleware, which focused on the core and native libraries provided in Android's runtime layer. Mm -hmm.